The FAA Greenlight Starship 10. Rocket Redemption. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of stormy weather. Why is that? I'm sick, guys. I'm sick. I don't know. I think the kids got me sick or maybe I got sick at the gym or something. Man, I've been fighting this all weekend. Anyways, welcome. It's Monday and I'm glad that you're here. Today we're going to be talking about Starship 10 or Starship X, however you want to look at it. I'm really excited about this. We actually went to Boca Chica for the launch August 4th and we were there for about three, four days, I think five days, somewhere on there. And then finally we gave up because it was not postponed for like a day or two or three. It was postponed for literally a couple of weeks. So now it looks like 20 days later, it's going to launch. So I went through a bunch of articles over the weekend and I want to give you the information so you know exactly where we're going here with Test Flight 10, Starship 10, however you want to look at it. So exciting, definitely exciting. I wish I could have been there, but it was postponed. And we couldn't sit in Boca Chica for 20 days. We'd be broke at the Margaritaville. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I want to go through some of this with you so you know exactly what to expect. And I hope that you join me for the launch on the 24th. This is going to be exciting, really exciting. Because this, I think, is going to be the end of Block 2. Thank God, guys. Thank God. Um, block 2 has been the thorn in the side of SpaceX for 2025. Um, Starship 7, boom. Starship 8, boom. Starship 9, boom, boom. <laughs> so they've been having a lot of problems and I'm glad that they're working through them and they learn a lot from it. So now we're going to see what ends up happening with this, the end of Block 2. And I bet, I bet they're probably glad to move on to Block 3. It's my personal opinion. The article starts out by saying Starship Flight 10, a crucial test. On August 24th, 2025, at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, SpaceX will launch Starship's 10th test flight from Starbase, Texas. That's Boca Chica. Cleared by the FAA after Flight 9's mishap, Test Flight 10 offers a global view of a defining moment. This flight is critical for SpaceX's vision of reusable space travel. Ship 37, the upper stage, overcame a Raptor engine failure during tests. SpaceX replaced the unit and conducted a single and a six engine static fire on July 31st and August 1st on the Orbital Launch Mount A, or OLM A. A spin prime test on August 13th, delayed by a supply line leak, confirmed readiness. Booster 16's controlled descent. Booster 16 won't be caught by Mechazilla's arms, but will splash down in the Gulf of America. SpaceX is focusing on data, testing a post-separation flip and a two-engine landing burn to simulate engine-out conditions refining the path to reusability. That's very important. Did you hear what they said? Two engine. So what they're going to do is instead of bringing it back and catching it with Mechazilla, which they know they can do without a problem, instead, they're going to land it in the Gulf of America, but with only two engines instead of three. They're going to deliberately shut down one of the three engines. Now, remember, those three Raptor engines are the gimbling engines, the ones that move around so that it can adjust itself and land in a specific location. Now that there's only going to be two on instead of three, that makes it a lot harder for it. And that's what they're trying to test to see if they can still land it on a dime within inches and do it with two engines instead of three. So that's going to be an interesting feat. So we'll see if that ends up working. Flight 10 follows setbacks. Flight 7's fuel leak explosion, Flight 8's engine failure, Flight 9's nose cone pressurization issue causing yet another explosion. This mission aims to deploy eight Starlink mass simulators, 16,000 kilograms, relight a Raptor engine in space, achieve clean splashdowns for Booster 16 and Starship 37 in the Gulf and Indian Ocean, and collect 
heat shield and re-entry data. Now, a couple of those are really important to me. Number one, I want to see these Starlink simulators be launched out. 16,000 kilograms. So there's eight of them. So that's be 2,000 kilograms each. So what is that like? 4,500 pounds each one. So you can understand that these new version three Starlink satellites are massive. They are a lot bigger than the Starlink 2 minis. So this is going to be impressive. And if there is as much video coverage that I think there's going to be of watching that payload door open and then it's shooting out like a Pez dispenser, those mass simulators, let's say those Starlink version three simulators, this is going to be really cool. Something to watch for sure. And then also the heat shielding. I want to see what happens with that because in the past, all heat shielding has been passively cooled. You got like a ceramic dish. <laughs> it's like a tile, right? And that's it. It heats up and it dissipates. It heats up and it dissipates. That's fine. Well, the new ones are going to actually be actively cooled instead of passively cooled, meaning behind it, most likely, I'm not sure, I don't work for them, there's going to be some type of cooling method, right, to cool the backside of it. Maybe there's going to be piping or who knows. Maybe it'll be something like your CPU and your computer. It's possible. I want to see how that goes because that could change everything. Because the biggest issue, even back in the 80s with the space shuttle, has always been these tiles. Those heat tiles are such a big issue and they always fall off and there's always problems with them, right? It is a big thing to fix. And if they're able to master that heat shielding, I mean, it's going to really revolutionize everything. So that is big. It continues. High stakes for lunar and Martian dreams. NASA's Artemis III, set for 2027, relies on Starship as its lunar lander, while Elon Musk's Mars cargo plans depend on a reusable system. Flight 10's success is vital to meet these tight timelines and prove Starship's reliability. I'll get into those tight timelines before the end of this video. Hang in there for that. Very important. Flight 9's methane leak caused by a diffuser rupture was fixed with a redesigned component. A June 18th explosion from a pressure vessel failure led to safer protocols, including lower pressures. Mexican concerns over Flight 9 debris on the beaches raised by the president and military unit could spark diplomatic issues over the Gulf splashdowns. A stepping stone to the stars. With 2025 flights planned and upgrades at Launch Complex 39A and Starbase's Pad 2, Flight 10 is a key milestone. A successful mission could solidify Starship's role in lunar landing and Mars exploration, pushing humanity closer to a multi-planetary future absolutely the case. Now, like I promised, deadlines. Deadlines are so important and that's why they really need to get this right in 2025. Because in 2026 is going to be our first opening, let's call it, to get to Mars. Now, why do I say that? Well, the only way for us to get to Mars is to launch in a very small window. And that window opens every like 700 and like 80 days, like just over two years. So every two years, we can actually launch to Mars. And using the Hohmann transfer, basically it's the way that we get to Mars using this semi-elliptical orbit to Mars, and we're actually pulling past Mars and letting Mars kind of pull up to us is kind of how it works. Well, it's a way to reduce energy or reduce propellant needed to get there and make it faster. All right. Basically, all in all, that's what it's all about. So we can only launch in this small window. And actually, that window is like, I think it's like 56 days. Don't quote me. Call me. It's fine. I think it's like about 56 days and that is it. That is the window. If we don't get out within those 56 days, we can't launch. What does that mean? That means that we have to wait 780 more days to do it again. Once again, just over two years. So the timeline is so critical that we get this ready for 2026 to be able to launch the first starships to Mars. Obviously, they're going to be unmanned. And who knows how many will actually get there, how many will make it. 
But either which way, this is a very big deal and they need to get this timing just right. So they need to push ahead and they need to push forward quick. And luckily for them, I just read just a couple of days ago that the current president signed an order that is going to alleviate some of the pressure on SpaceX and all space companies. So the FAA and all the rest of these bodies that determine when SpaceX can launch and all the rest of the space companies will be able to do this quicker or they're kind of forced to do it quicker. And that's really good because so many times we see stuff that's just drug drug through the mud. That's what happens with government, right? You work for the government, you know, I don't have to tell you. So anyways, you know, when I look at this, I'm, I'm excited to see what goes on here with this test 10, because like I said, at the beginning of this video, this is the end of an era. This is the end of block two. And I, I can tell you for sure, the folks over there at SpaceX are thanking God that block two is over because block two has been a thorn in their side ever since day one. Starship seven, boom. Starship eight, boom. Starship nine, boom. And even with Starship 10 sitting on the pad over there in Massey to, to be test fired, it didn't even get to test fire. It just was loading fuel and then blew up. So it's just been problem after problem after problem after problem when it comes to block two. So We'll see what ends up happening with block three, but I guarantee you they are happy to move on. Another thing that I'm really excited about is Launch Complex 39A. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's basically, let's say a duplicate of Starbase that we have in Texas, but here about three hours north of me on the Space Coast in Cape Canaveral. So seeing that Launch Complex 39A is on its way and they're working on it. I'm gonna say probably within about a year, maybe a year and a few months, we're gonna be able to see a Starship launch, a test launch right out of Cape Canaveral. And when that happens, I'm not gonna to have to travel all the way to Texas to be able to see this thing happen. And like you saw just a couple of weeks ago when we went to Texas and we were just kind of sitting there on our hands, <laughs> we did get to see everything. And you know what? Um, it was really nice being there because since the launch didn't happen, we were able to have access right to launch pad A and launch pad B. I was standing doing coverage about less than a football field away from that OLM, which is just sick to me. Watching all the fuel being loaded and watching everything going on, it's just absolutely amazing. It is awe-inspiring to see. So we wouldn't have been able to see that if the launch actually happened because that would be completely sealed off. So as I always say, there's a silver lining in everything. So we didn't get to see the launch this time, but that's okay. We'll see a future launch and hopefully a launch here out of Florida would be really cool to see. So, you know, I've been doing a lot of coverage of SpaceX Starlink, and I have about 550 videos of SpaceX Starlink up there. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it. Matter of fact, I'll put a link over here, right here. You can click on it now if you want, or don't. Let me finish. <laughs> Anyways, I'll put that right there, but I've been doing a lot of Starlink videos and um, the how-to stuff and whatnot, and seeing that we're getting really close to getting those SpaceX Starlink version 3 satellites up there on orbit that are not only massive, but provide about 15, 20 times the capacity is sick. What that means is we're not going to have any issues anymore with people having to pay extra because there's um, a lot of congestion in this area or in that area, paying an extra hundred dollars or two fifty, five hundred, seven fifty, even a thousand dollars extra to be able to get SpaceX Starlink. We're not going to see that anymore. Also, we're going to see speeds go up. That's upload speeds and download speeds. No problem. They will be going up and latency will be going down because those satellites are going to be lower in orbit. They're going to be more powerful and we're simply going to get better latency. Most likely it's going to be sub 20 milliseconds. I'm getting right now about 14 to 15 milliseconds sometimes. Other times we're seeing about 25 to 30, but I have seen 14, I think 14.3 was the lowest I was seeing. So that's pretty damn good considering they don't even have those version threes up there yet. So to see that, 
Pez dispenser door open up and launch out those eight duds, let's call them, will be a really just an amazing sight to see. So I hope that you are with me for that. Once again, on the 24th, be here. I'll start coverage probably two, three hours early. I'll let some videos run in the background and I'll kind of come in and out. But I am really, really excited about this. And I hope you are too. Because once again, it's going to be an end to a block two, which is awesome. And we're going to move into a block three after that, which is fantastic. If you enjoyed the video, throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, I appreciate that. Click this little button over here and then click all. It's a notification button. So when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, don't forget to take a look at my merch over at my shop. Go to jcristina.com forward slash shop. I have a bunch of merch over there. We got hats. We got Megabit here. We have a IFT 10 or IFT X, as I call it, Starship X commemorative shirt to commemorate the end of Block 2. Hopefully it's a successful end of Block 2. Anyways, if you like something, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. We'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.